Hi, my name's Laura and I work at the Samri Wellbeing and Resilience Centre. This year for Women's Health Week, we would like to shine a light on women's mental health. As women are more likely to face challenges such as anxiety, depression and eating disorders. Over the coming weeks, we'll be sharing videos of real women in our network telling real stories about their own mental health. By sharing these videos, we hope to inspire women everywhere to be more open to sharing their stories at home, with friends, in workplaces, in mother groups, and their communities. Mental health matters, and the more we talk about both the challenges we face and the positive strategies that we use, the more we can embed mental health into our everyday lives. I think the, the most accurate way I've heard a panic attack be described is Imagine you're on the top floor of a tall building and the fire evacuation alarm goes off and there's a few minutes for everyone to evacuate safely. You can begin to sense um, what would happen in your body in that situation and the types of thoughts that would go on in your mind. Except the difference with a panic attack is that you're the only one who hears that alarm, so to speak. And that alarm goes off when you're um, sitting at your desk in the workplace writing, um, um, writing an email or you're waiting for the kettle to boil or you could be in the car um, and you know trying to hide these symptoms and trying to um, to pretend that nothing's happening uh, for example if you're in a meeting at work um, and this happens and, and you're trying to suppress the the symptoms or you're trying to pretend that um, uh, that, that nothing is going on for you, that really, um, in my experience, just perpetuates the issue. So acceptance for me was one pathway to starting to manage those, those symptoms. Um, but I think also what's really powerful is sharing these stories, sharing these everyday common stories of people um, who are faced with these, with these mental health issues. Had I had heard more of these stories, um, for me, certainly, it would have it would have made um, made a difference. Hi all, coming to you live from my lounge room at my home, where I share with you my self care activity. What I like to do in the evening is to look to YouTube for some meditation music, something with a nice background like this one, and just spend about an hour just reflecting, letting the cares and worries of the world go away and instead focusing on the things that I'm grateful for. I just find that this relaxes me and helps me to set myself up for a good night's sleep. It's something that I do every day and something that I think really helps me. Welcome to Women's Health Week and the week that contains Are You OK Day 2020. Thanks to Sam Rees Wellbeing and Resilience Centre team for inviting me to share some stories. I'm Beck Smith, and for those of you who don't know me, a lot of people see me as an outgoing, warm, friendly person who seems to be pretty bubbly. And I tend to portray that image because I do a lot of public speaking, I teach group fitness classes, and so there's a bit of a persona that goes along with that. And there is, there are probably a bunch of assumptions that go along with that as well. And for somebody who is mentally healthy for somebody who is pretty physically fit these days people can assume that it's always been that way and that oh gosh she's she's so lucky but that's not the case a lot of people are surprised to hear that I've got a history of struggling with mental illness and that I had anorexia as a teenager uh, I've had experienced post-traumatic stress disorder and I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in my early 20s all of these as mental illnesses I can put down to being a result of some pretty catastrophic things and some real challenges in my life that you might refer to as mental injuries. So it's led me to start to think of mental illness as being the, the flow on effect or the, the carryover from mental injuries. Like it's a little bit like you injure a limb and then you have some inflammation that goes on if you don't heal properly. I think a lot of the time we suffer for too long with mental illness because we just don't know the tools and the strategies that we need to properly recover from those mental injuries that we experience. So 
In sharing a little of my background, I hope it gives you some context for recognising that mental illness isn't weakness. Mental illness is often something that hasn't been rehabilitated properly, but there are tools, there are strategies, there are things that we can learn and there are supports out there for you, like the work that I do, like the work that the Samri Wellbeing and Resilience Centre does, and that it's never too late to reach out for that support either. So may you be well this Women's Health Week and continue to look after yourself as well as others. Hi. I would like to share with you three practices that have really helped me through the most difficult time in my life, which was last year when my marriage of 30 years fell apart. The key strategy that I really applied was mindfulness. So taking long walks along the beach, in nature, or doing meditation. By doing those activities, it meant that I could come into stillness. And by coming into stillness, it has opened up my mind to accepting and surrendering to what is. It also allowed me to actually come to the next strategy, which is opening my mind to what is going well in my life. The fact that I have people who love me, that I have an amazing and meaningful job, and the fact that I have good health and that I can actually walk in nature in beautiful sunshine, in beautiful surrounding. And the third strategy that had really helped me through this very tough time was that willingness to show my vulnerability. By being, having that courage to tell my colleagues on certain days that it's too hard to come to work because things are messy at home or by showing my vulnerability to my children and saying mom can't get out of bed today it's been really hard it was that willingness to actually practice self-compassion so these three strategies of practicing mindfulness coming to stillness cultivating gratitude and appreciating the good things that are happening in my life despite the challenges and that willingness to practice self-compassion and show vulnerability have really helped me. So if you are going through some challenges in your lives, please give these strategies a try and see if they might help you too. All the best. Hi, I'm Marissa and I work at the Samri Wellbeing and Resilience Centre. On behalf of the whole team, we would like to thank Monique Newbury, Nikki Christopoulos, Beck Smith and Kim Siao for stepping up and sharing their mental health stories for Women's Health Week. We hope that you all enjoyed the series and have taken this opportunity to reflect on your own mental health too.